رحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحد العقدة من لسان يفقى قولي الحمد لله وذل الله سبحانه سبحانه وتعالى we will continue إن شاء الله studying together الشماء المحمدية هذا شماء لبسيدنا المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم and we ask Allah to let us know more about him so that our love to him will increase and whenever we want to do anything to follow his comments his uh, advices to be obedient so that we can get the best of dunya and akhira and more importantly beside his khuluq beside his uh, khulq beside his khalq beside his his shape how he looks like we need his akhlaq khuluq this moral character sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he will be happy with that sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he's happy when we follow him in how we dress how we looks like how we pray he will be more happy with our moral characters inshallah and today tonight uh, topic will be uh, the messenger of allah's hair subhanallah the hair of sayyidina rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and here, whenever we read about the hair of the Prophet Sallallahu I mean in the hair of the head and the hair of the beard. Oh, and then we will uh, 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 we'll know about them, inshallah. Bidni Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So request Brother Ghazan to read for us uh, the hadith after I read first the hadith in Arabic. This one, short one. And Ghazan will read it in English. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال كان شعر رسول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى نصف أذني كان شعر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى نصف أذني نعم أنس بن مالك said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم would reach sorry I repeat again Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه said the messenger of Allah's hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would reach midway between his ears. Now, again. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an said, the messengers of Allah's hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would reach midway between his ears. Now, in the middle of his ears. And that, uh, when we read here, uh, later, uh, this is what... Uh, we call it lumma in between in the middle of his air sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they call it lumma and uh, that's how Sayyidina Anas saw him once radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda naam okay the second hadith an Aisha qalat kuntu agtasilu أنا ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من إناء واحد وكان له شعر فوق الجمة ودون الوفرة نعم عائشة رضي الله عن said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and I would take a bath from a single vessel and he صلى الله عليه وسلم would have would have hair that was higher than shoulder length that is Jumma and less than earlobe length. Wafra. Naam. So, al, al, uh, as we say, Al-Jumma, she said, Al-Jumma, it reached to his shoulder, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have seen him. She have seen him and she have experienced and the Sahaba as well. And sometime up to middle of his ear, but mainly used to be in between. In between. They call Lumma. Naam. Okay. So, Sayyidina Aisha, she sh once she said she was uh, bathing with him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But you know, how, of course, they were. He wear sarong like sallallahu alaihi wasallam, probably dress and and that shows that he is human. How we going to know about his private life and take it as a lessons and advices for us in our life, without the wives of 
him sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about that and you can see sayyidna aisha said sayyidna khadija said sayyidna ummu salama safiya many of them mention uh, about the hadith about that you know and sayyidna aisha like she was she was here how when even bathing but she was looking to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam the how she was very like uh, the love in her heart towards him sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know, don't want to use any moment without saying something great about him sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his khalq alayhi salatu wassalam naam the third hadith here an ummu an ummi so, sorry an ummi hani binti abi talib ummi hani sayyidna ali's radiyallahu anhu arda's sister ummu hani qalat قدم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مكة قدمة وله أربع غدائر. أم هاني بنت أبي طالب رضي الله عنها said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم once arrived in Mecca and he had four breads. Again read it please. أم هاني بنت أبي طالب رضي الله عنها said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم once arrived in Mecca and he had four braids. He arrived, the Ummu Hani is Sayyidina Ali's sister and she became a Muslim in Fatih Mecca when Sayyidina Rasulullah took Mecca Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she was at towards the end. Although during Sayyidina Rasulullah's life with uh, them, they were very yeah, close to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and Ummu Hani said when he came, that I mean that day, okay. And he stayed, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in her house because he doesn't have house in Mecca anymore. Because he was living in Medina, so when he came to Mecca, he stayed at her house, Ummu Hani radhiyallahu anha, for 18 days. Wow. That he spent 18 days in Mecca, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, before he go back to Medina. Naam. And she said he had what do you call it? Arba. Uh, huh? For breads. Why? Because his hair was long and it was a war, traveling. So it's easy for, you know, in those days they make it easy to make it, in, to make it uh, a bit shorter, smaller, let's say, easy. So he met the bread, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she saw him like that once, in, 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 during Fatih Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from under the imama. That shows the hair was a bit longer. Naam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other hadith now, we want to make it a bit faster because of your hadith. And Ibn Abbas, now Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, see now, they mention him, uh, Anas, Sahabi, Aisha, wife of Sayyidina Rasulullah, Ummu Hani, his cousin, and Ibn Abbas, Sahabi, and his, uh, his cousin as well. And that's his auntie, Maymuna, Rasulullah's wife, so he has uh, also a closeness to Sayyid Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we mentioned before, those people, they are the one who can, they have got a barakah, the blessed moment to be with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, in a situation, in a house, in the house or something that others cannot have the same. So without losing the opportunity, they have something to say about these moments, alhamdulillah. So Sayyidina Abin Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, qal, inna Rasulallah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yasdilu sha'arahu, وكان المشركون يفرقون رؤوسهم وكان أهل الكتاب يسدلون رؤوسهم وكان يحب موافقة أهل الكتاب فيما لم يؤمر فيه بشيء ثم فرق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأسه نعم ابن عباس رضي الله عنه relates that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to let his hair hang in front Yani around his four look without uh, putting them, is it? Parting them, sorry. Parting them. parting them, without parting them. Yani what that mean when he comb the hair all together? There will be nothing in between, nothing from here, nothing in, no, no uh, line. All together, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will comb it like that. Uh, yeah, you read it, uh, so we will know, yeah. Where else the politics would part the hair on ah, their They will heads. part. Yeah. They will, like, from this side, they will make hair, you know, one side from here and one So it will be two sides, one in between, uh, one line in between. No, he never used to that. 
he go, he do different against what they do. So what he do, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, come all together. Why? Read. And the people of the book would let their hair hang in front. So he follow ahlul kitab. He follow ahlul kitab, who are Yahud and Nasara, because they have the real relations about the prophets. Sayyidina Isa, Sayyidina Musa, uh -huh. so, but not, not Al-Mushrikeen, because they are the one who close to believe Ahlul Kitab. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was, you know, as long as there is nothing come to him, order to say do something different, he will follow Ahlul Kitab in that matter. Naam. He used to like to confirm to the people of the book. Naam. He in used those to matters. like to confirm to the people, people of, of the, the book, book to follow them. Yeah. To those matters for which he received no command. As long as there is no command, say no to do something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he will do the same. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. Then the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, began to part the hair on his head. That means he have received after that, but this part after when, because the mushrikeen become less, al Madina all with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All right? And then that means there is a command for him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to do part, yani at the middle. They seen him. It shouldn't not that mean always, but he have been seen, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like that. Naam. So he has the uh, what you call it. Uh, 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 his the, the the narrations or uh, when. Uh, uh, revolution, let's say. Revelation from Sayyidina uh, Jibreel alayhi salam. Naam. So, this uh, matter of the hair <coughs> is very important. Why very important? Because it's beside the description of him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and knowing about him and all the narrations of Sahaba, the Allah anhum, we have to mention also about other narrations which was in Sahih, Bukhari and Muslim about this matter. Very important to know about it. Uh -huh. Because uh, many people, they have, I think you have seen in social media, YouTube, people displaying the hair Mubarak of Sayyidina Mustafa, Bal Mubarak, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for Barakah. So someone say, what that mean? Is it good to do that? Is it okay to do that? Is it uh, not haram or something? Others يعني, say, yes, it's okay. Someone said, but it's become too much. How to know? Is it authentic or not? Or so I found that we should also talk a little bit about this matter. Okay. During, like nowadays in Hajj season, that the Hajjatul Wada'a, the Hajj of Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I will, this hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim agree upon, and a very strong hadith, a hadith Sahih, for both Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim. يعني باب المناقب, the merits of Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the hadith in English. Let me go straight away. Anas رضي الله عنه وارضاه narrated that after the messenger of Allah sallallahu uh, sallam, had thrown the jamarat at jamra the stone in the jamra that the first day after Muzdalifa came back is jamra to aqaba right but the last one only one the first day yawm nahr the eid day so he went there so what he have done throw the jamra after that he went to his lodge in Mina and sacrificed. He do the, the Qurban. Yeah. Then he called for a barber and pointed his right side to him. Yani shave from here. Shave from here, he said to him. Then he pointed after he shaved, he shaved the from the right. Then he pointed to his left side and said, take hair from here, this side, left side. Then he distributed his hair among the Sahaba. Oh, wow. Distributed what? 
heard among us Sahaba. That's one of the narrations. See, let us continue with one more. Uh, the other narration is that also by Sayyidina Anas, he said after Sayyidina Rasulullah came and he, the, he asked, uh, he turned, uh, uh, he, uh, after he thrown the Jamarat and sacrificed an animal, he turned the right side of his head towards the barber who shaved, shaved it for him. Okay, in the narrations, who is that barber? There's two narrations, if you uh, know. One, he's Abu Talha, Al-Ansari, radiallahu anhu, one of them, who... Uh, one of the Sahaba al-Kiram radiallahu anhum and the other one his name Muammar bin Abdullah bin Nadla he is also in the Sahaba to Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi uh, wa sallam no, this is the names of the um. so he turned to the one shaved him then he called Abu Talha so that mean here I mean must be Abu Talha was there but not he, he was not the barber someone else but some of them said he was the barber in the narration. Anyway, so he called Abu Talha al-Ansari radiallahu an and gave his hair to him. Then he turned his head to the left side and asked the barber to shave it. And he gave the hair to Abu Talha and told him distributed among the people. So what that mean? Sayyidina Rasulullah knows what he's doing. Tabarruk, they give the tribute among the Sahaba. They were all presented at that place. And Sayyidina Rasulullah, when he did that, he knows what he's doing, and he never do anything from his own. So what has happened? He said, uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, also, now, mm -hmm. in Sahih Imam Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, the book of virtues, the book of virtues, chapter, his closeness to the people, yani as Sahaba, they are seeking blessings from him and his humility towards them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tabarrukuhim bihi. The translation here is not very, you know, he says, Bab qurbu nabi alayhi wa sallam, minanna, wa tabarrukuhum bihi. And they're seeking the blessing from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tabarrukuhum bihi. Tabarruk. Okay. So Sayyidina Anas said, when he shaved, what happened? He said, I saw when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got his hair cut by the barber, his companions came round, around him, and they eagerly wanted that, they eagerly wanted that, so no, no hair should fall but in the hand of a person. Each of them get between two to three hairs from his blessed hair, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Each minus, yani, so the queue, all of them. That's the blessed one. He got the opportunity. He got. So Sayyidina Abu Talha was distributing them. The, uh -huh. mm. Al ulama, what they said about this? They said number one, this hadith very <laughs> authentic hadith, Imam Bukhari, Muslim. Number two, and uh, the distribution of the hair not by their request. It's he himself did that. No one say, give us from your head. No, before anyone asks, he gave that. Plus, so no one can say anything. And then that's here what they're going to do with it. He's not going to eat or drink. So what they do with that? They will keep it with them. And among them, many, uh, so among them, for example, the, there is uh, the hair have reached to Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, radiallahu an. Example, Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Uh, and he got, he, was, he got blessed hair of Sayyidina Mustafa, the Imam Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar mentioned that. He said that he got the hair of Sayyidina and the nails as well. And he instructed his people to, that hair and the nails, to be buried with him in his grave. Allah. Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu. He's not a simple man. You know. And riwayat al-Imam al-Bukhari, in riwayat al-Imam al-Bukhari, and Ibn Sirin. Ibn Sirin, he was min al-tabi'in. He and Hassan al-Basri, tabi'in, the followers of Sahaba. And he have got, he was close to someone, Ahad Riwat al-Hadith, the narrators of the Hadith, his name, uh, Abida, Mu'ubayda, Abida. So he said, I said, said to him, to Abida, Abida, he was, a, he became a Muslim, Amul Fatih. 
but he didn't get a sohba for Rasulullah. Same year, but, but therefore he have seen many sahaba and he have get to know the ilm and you know, akhbar Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from many sahaba. So Ibn Shirin, he was saying, saying to him uh, to, uh, that we have, ya Abida, we have got, we have a hair, blessed hair of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. We got it from Anas, or in the nation said, from Anas family, siblings. So Abida said to him, Wallahi, when he heard that, if I got one of them, one of that's higher, it's better than dunya and what is in dunya for me. Someone who follows Sahaba and he was among Tabi'een and he say like that. And he got the knowledge. But this is, but beside that, he said, that means he have got information, knowledge about Sayyidina Mustafa and the meaning of Tabarruk. So he knows what he's saying. So when we talk about that, no need some, anyone to teach us what to say and what to do. Huh? Naam. Okay. Then Sayyidina Mustafa, he is the one who gave the hair to them. They are not the one who asked. Are they the one who said, Ya Rasulullah gave us, or he gave? He gave. Ah. And Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was against any cultures of uh, wathaniya, again, any doors, doors, there's any shirik or something. And he knows what that means, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the one Allah said him with tawheed. Uh -huh. No one can say this is shirik or something. He done by himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So anyone have any word to say, please keep your mouth, you know, close. Don't say anything because the Idna Rasulullah knows what that means. And the Sahaba knows what that means. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Tayyip. Uh, and also, <clears throat> this is the deen. This is what? The deen, our deen, we know. So we take our deen from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He won't open a way to a shaitan to enter. He just throw a shumarat against shaitan. So, <laughs> so he knows what he's doing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have to have the adab of sahaba how to deal with this. Among them, they keep it with them. Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, he used to have it in his helmet. In his helmet. Once in the war, he lost the helmet. He go again and he was dangerous, you know. So he got the helmet. They say, what, why, what, why, what for you got this? So he opened and he got, he said, because of this, the hair of Sayyidina Rasulullah. And in the narration that Sayyidina Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal radiallahu an, <clears throat> whenever he have any issues that to Allah want in, in, in fiqh or masala and he want to give the right fatwa, he would put his uh, right hand on his left side and do like that. So his student noticed that few times. Then he asked him, what this here? So he took a small piece, something, cloth, opened it, and they saw the hair. Ah, this is from Rasulullah's hair. Whenever I do that, Allah opened my heart for me. No, no, that's not all. We're going to see many of these things now. Naam? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. In Ruwayat uh, al-Imam al-Bukhari, is another narration by whose? By whom? Sahih al Bukhari. Uh, the riwayah said that uh, uh, Uthman bin Abdullah bin Mawhab said, My people, my, his family, send me with a bowl of water to Umm Salama. Umm Salama, who's Umm Salama? Umm al Mu'mineen. Rasulullah's wife, Umm al the mother of believers. The one who read the, the hadith, his name is Israel. Someone, his name is Israel, Ahadul Tabi'in. Mm. So, Israel, he pointed with his three fingers like this. What that mean when he was talking? Which there was some, he said, indicated the small side of the container in which there was, in that, but what? The, some hairs of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uthman bin Mu'adid, if any person, why they do that? They put the hair in the, in the water, in the bowl. Uh, they go to Umm Salama, what for? He said, if any person suffer from evil eye or some other diseases, 
he would send a vessel containing water to Ummu Salama. I looked at the container that held the hair of Sayyidina Rasulullah and saw a few red hairs in it. Allah. Why red? Because Sayyidina Rasulullah used to put yeah. what? Hinna. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, Hinna, Katam. So what they do? They take that hair, they put in water, so it's Shifa. Shifa. And they do after Rasulullah passed away. So during his time, because during his time, but after his and who's doing that? Sahaba and Umu Salama radiallahu anhu. So anyone who's sick, she has the hair of Sayyidina Mustafa. They send the water, put for, you know, and they drink for it. Say anyone has evil eye, hasad, jealousy, someone from him, you know, what? We will, will get cured immediately. Subhanallah. And same narration, and other narration, Sayyidina Uthman bin Abdullah bin Mawhab radiallahu anhu qala, he said, I went to Ummu Salama radiallahu anha and she brought out for us some of the dyed hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yani what? When she go to uh, the, there, she, she knows what they want. Huh? And they are also in their heart, they want to see something. So with their, she present to them the best thing they can see. Radiallahu ta'ala, which is the hair of Sayyidina Mustafa sallallahu alayhi in this narration, he said, which was dyed with hinna and katam. Katam is something like, uh, similar like hinna is a color, I mean, hinna. That katam, what, what mean katam is to mute the color of, uh, like for example, those whom they put, they dye her with the gray hair, they put black or something, to what? To, to darken it, to mute it, to, to, to the, the, for the, the white hair to go. So the hinna will overcome the white hair. But there's a sunnah, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to do it sometime in, uh, uh, in, in, in certain places, as you see here. Mm -hmm. And قال الإمام ibn Hajar رضي الله عنه, Imam ibn Hajar said, meaning here, whoever sick, there is always a pharmacy, <laughs> for example, <laughs> where Ummu Salama رضي الله عنه. <laughs> and she took that hair and clean it, you know, put it in the water, and she give it back to them, they will drink it, or they will bathe with it. Mm -hmm. فتحصلوا له بركتها Then they will get its blessings. بركتها And that's the narration also of Imam al-Nawawi that Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he said, if I die, put the hair in my kafan. رضي الله تعالى عنه In fact, there, there are people made poems Describing the hair of Sayyidina al Mustafa among Sahaba and Naam. And they say, How many hairs here? How many? This is all something very interesting for all of us to, yani about Sayyidina al Mustafa sallam, and Tabarruk al Sahaba. <coughs> there are other barakat we will do later on about his clothes, sallallahu alayhi wa his hands, sallallahu alayhi wa when he touched some man. So this is all the barakah of Sayyidina al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa which for all of us to understand. Allah, he is a great barakah. No, great barakah. Well, only one thing. Because it's something extraordinary to see the hair of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, though during Ottoman's time, uh, empire, they were very concerned about anything that belongs to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will buy it. They will buy it. They, how much, you know, the, Especially from those whom they are really trusted to have something belongs to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they got all the, because it was about 600 years ago, and they conquered other places where the people used to look after that very well. And they kept it with them, like from Mecca and Medina and Egypt, Iraq, these places where, you know, where the Kufa, where the Sahaba is there in, in Mecca and Medina. They said, look, better to keep uh, with us so others can see. Others can see, so they get the baraka. Mm. Therefore, there is always something called farman. There is a certificate, big certificate. This is got from where and who, certificate, with chop and signature. In Iraq, we have in three places. In Maqam Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalani, and one in uh, Imam uh, Sayyidina Abu Hanifa, and one in a uh, family, they are Turkish origin. They have this, with Farman. They are three or two, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 
And we never show to anyone only in two occasions. In Mawlid al-Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Laylatul Qadr. Not anyone come, please, I want to see. No, cannot. There's a place where you put. Because something big, great. If like that. So how attempting this issue? Because you see in, 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 in TV, in, in, in uh, YouTube, something, you know, and people, they were very confused about this. I see if something, this one, something which for us, you see what he said here, Atabi said, it's for me better than if I got one, is you know, is better than dunya, and what is in dunya? Uh, for the barakah of Sayyidina Mustafa So it's not something easy, like it's something very great. No, you cannot, you have, if you have a, a very good diamond example, not anyone you open the safe and every day you go, I go and say, okay, come, I open it. No, you won't, nobody, no, you, in fact, it cannot be happen like that. Because it's, we have to know the adab with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Can I see, can I see, can I see? No, cannot. He's not. Plus, how authentic? And that's another issue. I have seen. So I've seen people, they have this. Okay, show me. I say, this is not certificate, ya akhi. You have got from fulan, and fulan have got from fulan, and fulan from, okay, khalas. But the origin of it from where? Where is the certificate? Not anyone brings something and khalas. Because we, the people have emotion. They have love. But we cannot because the love, we have to cheat them. Na'udhu billah. So, plus talking, say, this is belongs to Rasulullah and it's not belongs to Rasulullah. Wallah, it's very dangerous. It is very, very, very dangerous. Kadib, this one, kadib, lie. And Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, whoever lie, saying something, you know, about me, you know, especially if he is, he knows it's not, maybe not correct, or something, that means his now the Billah place reserved for him in Jahannam. That is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not any. I went once somewhere, one place, I don't want to say where. He got a piece of the cloth from Rasulullah. From Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman. From Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. From, I say, Ya Akhi. Wallahi, I don't know. <laughs> yani, why, the, how you got this thing <laughs> come to you? Give us something to show that this is authentic. Sahih wa la If I say, Haji Ghazan, this is your house, he say yes. Show me. He show me the deed. Sahih wa la la. You know, claim. You cannot claim like that. And because of the people, and now it cannot be. Right? It cannot be like that. And if it truly belongs to Sayyidina Mustafa, Sallallahu have to be. Otherwise, it's dangerous. What for? What for someone claim with something? They are. They are here, alhamdulillah. They are and certified. Right? So these things we have to be also considered. Maybe people, people ask, is that, is that correct? Is this authentic? Is that? No. Give me something. Wallahi, I I always keep quiet. I won't say anything. But yeah, he say, please, if you make you sure you know about this, if not, don't, don't fail in a big problem. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah protect us. Sahaba al-Kiram, radiyallahu anhu, they have the, they know what that means. So we have to follow the same teaching and know what we are talking about. So that don't be, no, it's not something cheap, na'udhu billah. It's something very great. Allah, if you got this barakah, any khalas. This is something which we can leave to, huh? for your family. Alhamdulillah, barakah fi dunya la akhira. Uh, may Allah bless us with barakah and uh, protection. And may Allah increase our love. And Inshallah, one day we can get the barakah to see that. All of you somewhere, inshallah. You have the intention, good intention, you will, you will have it. And uh, may Allah grant us the barakah fi dunya wal akhira. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna, aqbalna, aqbal lana, warhamna, wa samihna. Warda anna bi ramadhais bihi an ibadika salihin. Bi rahmatika, ya rahman, rahimin. Wa ila hadratil habibu al-azam, Sayyidina Mustafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala ashamatihi al-fatiha. صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله قبل الله منا منكم